Today we've got a nonlinear differential equation which we're going to solve by constructing an appropriate substitution. So let's see what we have. We have x cubed times y double prime plus 2x squared equals x times y prime minus y all squared. So let's look at this and notice that the right hand side is maybe the complicated side at this point. And so maybe the first goal should be to simplify that right hand side. And in this case, we probably want to simplify the stuff that's in the square. In other words, x, y prime minus y. And what do I mean by simplify that? Well, I mean start off with some sort of substitution that'll make that collapse from two terms to one term. Okay, so let's try the following. So let's set perhaps y equal to x times z where z is some sort of new function. Now, I'd like to observe that that's motivated by the fact that this thing here looks a little bit like the product rule has been applied. Notice if we take the derivative of x, we get one, and that would be just this y term. And then if you take the derivative of y, you have y prime. Now, of course, there's a minus sign there instead of a plus sign, but still, we're using this as inspiration, not like a direct formula. So anyway, let's see what happens if we set y equal to x times z. Okay, so let's calculate y prime here, which is pretty clearly going to be x times z prime plus z. And now let's multiply that by x because that's like doing x times y prime and subtract well, what we're setting equal to y, which is x times z, and observe that that's going to simplify to x squared times z prime. So anyway, what we have here is this right-hand side is simplifying to x squared times z prime. And now next up, what we're going to do is just plug our substitution into the original differential equation and see what we have. Okay. So plug in and, well, what are we going to be left with? Well, x cubed times y double prime, well, that's going to be x cubed times, well, we can calculate y double prime pretty easily. It's going to be x times z double prime, and then plus 2 times z prime, and then plus, well, the second derivative of x, which is 0. So you can do that either by using maybe the binomial expansion type formula for a multiple derivatives, or you can do that just by taking the derivative twice. Okay, so we've got something like this, plus two times x squared equals, well, now this right-hand side, which is x to the fourth times z prime quantity squared. Okay, so observe that we can multiply all of this out pretty easily, and we'll have x to the fourth times z double prime plus 2x cubed times z prime plus 2x squared equals x to the fourth times z prime quantity squared. And then we can divide everything by, let's see, x squared and we'll be left with x squared times z double prime plus 2x times z prime plus 2 equals x squared times z prime squared. Okay, so we've got something like that, but we still have a nonlinear differential equation here. And well, since we still have a nonlinear differential equation here, there's probably some sort of other substitution that we might want to do. And this substitution is going to be a little bit more complicated. And what in fact we'll do in this case is substitute z equal to f of u, where u, where u is a function of x, and f is to be determined. So as we'll see, throughout the calculation, we will be able to determine a nice value for the function f. 
Okay, so well, let's observe that if z is equal to f of u, then what do we have? We have z prime is equal to f prime of u times u prime. That's of course using the chain rule here. And then next up, z double prime is equal to, well, let's see, it'll be f double prime of u times u prime squared, and then plus f prime of u times u double prime. And now next up, we're gonna plug that in again. And let's see what we're left with. So we'll have x squared times f double prime of u times u prime quantity squared, and then plus an x squared times f prime of u times u double prime. That'll be from our x squared times z double prime term. And then next up, we'll have plus 2x times our z prime term. So that'll be f prime of u times u prime. And then next, plus 2 equals, now we're left with this x squared times our z prime squared. So z prime is this right here. So I'll just write this as f prime of u times u prime all squared. Okay. So we've got something like that at the moment. Now looking at this, this is still a nonlinear differential equation, but that being said, there's a term on the left-hand side and a term on the right-hand side, which cause maybe most of the difficulty. And that would be this term involving the u prime squared. We have a derivative squared. So I'll just underline each of those in this magenta color. And now if these two magenta underlines were equal, then we would get quite a bit of simplification. Notice we would collapse to this differential equation right here, which, well, we'll look at it when we get to it, but is hopefully solvable. Okay, so let's see what we get for setting these equal to each other. Notice that the x squareds will cancel. Furthermore, the u prime squareds will cancel. Notice I have a u prime squared over here on this left-hand magenta underline and one over there on that right hand. And we'll be left with f double prime of u equals f prime of u all squared. Okay, but then I can make a simple substitution here where I set w equal to f prime of u and that gives me the differential equation w prime equals let's see, w squared, which is of course a separable differential equation. That gives me uh, w prime over w squared equals one. And then integrating, I'll have minus one over w equals, notice our background variable here is u, at this point at least. Or in other words, we'll have w equals minus one over u, which means finally f of u is equal to minus the natural log of the absolute value of u. So, well, you might say, well, what about some constants of integration here? Well, at this moment, we're just seeking out some sort of substitution which would do um, a simplifying step. So we don't actually need constants of integration. Those will pop out near the end of our calculation. Okay, so let's look right here. We've got f was to be determined up here. And right now we have determined what f should look like. Okay, great. But now we're almost home free. So we can take this value for f of u and plug it into the differential equation above, keeping in mind that those two magenta sides will cancel based off of our construction right here. That was the point of forming this version of f. So let's see what we have now. So of course, this is just, like I said, from plugging this value for f of u inside of this differential equation above. So we'll have x squared times u double prime times f prime of u, but observe that f prime of u will be minus one over u. So that'll in fact be minus x squared over u double prime. So in fact, that'll be minus x squared times u double prime over u. And then similarly for this term, we'll have a minus 2x u prime over u, and then we have plus 2 equals 0. 
But now we can multiply through by u and we'll see that we have the following differential equation. x squared times u double prime plus 2x times u prime minus 2 times u equals 0. Where of course I also multiplied through by a minus sign. Okay. So now where do we go from here? Well, this is actually known as a Cauchy-Euler differential equation, and these have standard solutions. But maybe let's not use the standard solutions. We'll just outline how to find them. So what we'll do is we'll set u equal to x to the r. But now observe that that means that u prime is equal to r times x to the r minus 1. And then u double prime is r times r minus 1 times x to the r minus 2. But then plugging all of this into our differential equation, which is above, and then, well, factoring an x to the r out, which observe that we'll achieve an x to the r for all of those terms, we'll have something like this. r squared plus r minus 2 equals 0. But that's a fairly simple quadratic equation to solve, and we'll see that we get r equals negative 2 or r equals positive 1. But that means that u equals x to the first power or u equals x to the negative second power were solutions to the differential equation just above there. But if those two are solutions, and here we have a homogeneous differential equation, then linear combinations of those are also solutions. So in other words, we in fact have u is equal to ax plus b over x squared which can be simplified to ax cubed plus b over x squared. Okay, so now we know what u is, but now observe that putting this all together, we know that our original variable y is actually negative x times the natural log of u by what we know about f over there and our original substitution. So putting that all together and then using logarithm rules, what in fact we have is y equals x times the natural log of the absolute value of x squared over ax cubed plus b. And there we have it. That's our final solution to this differential equation. And that's a good place to stop.